Welcome, I'm Dragon, and today I'll be showing you how to make this low poly train that you can see right now. So, with that said, let's get straight into this tutorial. First, add a cylinder, and before you do anything else after adding the cylinder, be sure to go down to the properties panel and select vertexes 16. Now, rotate it 90 degrees along the X or Y axis, depending on what way you want to build this. And then you could scale it along that same axis a little bit so it's a little bit longer. Then you could add a cube and move it along the Y axis, because that's what I decided to build this train on. Then you could pop into edit mode on the cube and extrude it upward to what you think would look good for a train. Then you could select the two sides of the cube that we just extruded and inset them for the windows. Then you can inset them again, then scale them both on the x-axis because that is as if we were moving them both individually except we only have to do it with one move. And they're equal, so that makes it nice. Now go Command R for loop cut and scroll up to seven until you have seven loop cuts. Then select the center loop cut and hit the O key for proportional editing and move it upward so that it looks more like a roof. And scroll is to make the loop bigger so that you're editing more things at once with proportional editing. Then turn off proportional editing. Unlike me, I forget until I start to move something. Now select the top faces, select P, and hit separate into selection. Now that they're in a different object, we could select the two sides and extrude and scale them along that x-axis. Then that they're out a little ways, we can move them down along the z-axis so that it continues making more of like a roofy type look. Then we can go back into it, select all of them, and scale it along the y-axis to make it so that they overhang a little bit. Then you can add another cylinder and make sure it still has 16 vertices. If it does, then you could scale it down a little bit and then move it along the y-axis and move it upward. Now go into edit mode on this cylinder and go into face select and select the top face. Then extrude it, scale it upward, extrude it, move it along the z-axis, then extrude it again along the z-axis and then scale it downward. Then you can hit I for inset and inset it a little bit and then extrude it along the z-axis downward. Now we can make the front of the train look a little better by going into edit mode on the first cylinder we added and extruding and scaling it a little bit and then insetting it and extruding it along the Y axis inward. Then we can add a cube and move it along the Z axis downward until it's underneath the first sphere we added and then move it along the Y axis so that it matches up with the front of this train. Then you can make it add a ton of loop cups and make it more like a triangle E shape in the front so that it looks a little better. Then you can select the back faces of this object and extrude it to the back of the train. Now add a mesh circle and make sure it has 34 vertexes. And move it along the Y axis to the front of the train. And with having the front of the train, you could select the back vertices and delete them. Now you can select the whole circle by selecting A and then scaling it a little bit along the Y axis a little bit smaller. Then extrude it and scale it. Then I go into vertex select mode and select four vertexes, then skip two, select four vertexes, skip two until you get the, to the end of this circle. Then you can assign that as a vertex group and extrude them upward a little bit, all of them, and then de deselect everything and select that vertex group that you have. And then you could just unselect any of the top ones that are not the top vertexes. Then you can extrude them upward into the train. And by going into the train, you could scale it downward a little bit. Then once you have positioned it to how you like it, you can keep it like that, and then we can go on to the next part, which is adding a cube and moving it downward. And then once you have moved it downward, you can shape it around to the front of your train thing. This will involve using loop cuts and just moving all these vertexes so that it fits. Here's a sped up version of that.
Now for modeling, all we have left is adding the wheels. So to add the wheels, you can go Shift A and add a mesh circle and make sure the vertexes is down to 15. Then you can move it downward so that you can see this circle a little better and then rotate it 90 degrees and then position it to where you think the first wheel would be. Then you can go into edit mode and extrude it and then scale it immediately after. Then select two vertexes, then skip one, then do this until you get them all. Then you can go extrude them and scale them. Then they should be in the middle and then you could select those vertexes that you didn't select before and shift D for duplicating them and then scale them toward the middle again. And by scaling them to the middle, you can see that it looks like another sphere. So to make it complete this sphere, you can go select two vertexes at once and then hit F for filling and then you can do this until you fill them all. Then once you have filled them all, you can select all these center vertexes and select F to make sure that they're a solid face. Then select the whole tire by selecting A and extrude it outward a little bit so that it's a little thicker. Then go and select only the sides and then extrude those a little bit so that it has a little bit of indentation. And then select the center face and extrude that out a little bit and then it has a little bit more detail. Then by selecting option D, you can get a linked duplicate. So this is why we do this is just in case you have anything that you wanna change on the tire, then you can change it and it would change them all. So I do this four times and then make sure that the front two are scaled smaller than the big ones. And then I make sure the tires aren't, one, the tires aren't very off centered. So I line them up pretty much. Now we can add a mirror modifier to mirror them to the other side and then we're pretty much done for the modeling. So the side that I did finally found that worked well for the mirroring what after I had set the origin to the 3D cursor was the Z axis. So that pretty much does it for the modeling. Though if you do want to fix that underneath you can just extrude the thing downward a little bit. But now let's go into coloring a little bit. Actually, before we go into coloring, I want to mention if you want to make this 3D printable, then you can make sure you can go option N and make sure their normals are not facing the wrong direction, which I did have the wheels the wrong direction. So then you could select all the objects and go command join, and then it's one object, and then you can export it as an SDL and put it into your slicer, which did work for me, and I did print it out. It just didn't turn out too well because I'm trying to figure out this new printer, which I will show you in a few upcoming videos. But now, let's go color it. So for the coloring, I basically just added simple blacks and reds and a little bit different shades of black. By changing the roughness and metallics, how metallic it is, that's basically how I colored this train. Then uh, for the front of the train, I did do something else by going into the shading tab and adding an emission shader and choosing the color light I wanted and then just increasing the strength a little bit. I did want to do that because a train usually has a big light in the front, at least this style of train. So that's basically what I wanted to show you for the coloring, but now I'll speed this up even more and show you the little scene I created along with this little train. <laughs> Here we go. I hope you like how it turned out as a render, but other than that, that pretty much does it for me today. I hope you found this tutorial on how to make this low poly train useful, but other than that, I'll hopefully see you in the next one, and bye!